sorting through performance claims. As part of our work we've studied many reports like these and especially picked out those that contain claims and data on the products we test. And this information is included in our reports. So let's take a look now at some product claims. This is some commercial data from Albemarle's introduction of KF757. We're showing the weight average bed temperature versus time on stream and there's two cycles, the earlier one on KF756 and the subsequent one in blue on KF757. Now it's it's rare that you see such clear separation between two commercial cycles and Albemarle provided a lot of information about these cycles, the feeds and uh, conditions and they also provided a lot of pilot plant data over a wide range of conditions with details on their pilot plant testing for the introduction of KF757. So we have picked this out, KF757, as an example of a case where a catalyst was introduced with some very strong claims that were backed up by a lot of really good data. And also DC2118 when it was introduced by Criterion they had a lot of data on different feeds from different crudes at different conditions that made a, con a convincing case for that product. So these two were both strong claims. Now let's take a look at some data from ART for 420DX and CDXI. Here is some vendor pilot plant data from ART and it's showing the activity for 420DX compared to CDXI and compared to the previous generation AT405 and we see a 25 percent benefit for the 420DX versus CDXI. This type of chart is is very common. In fact, all suppliers show this chart when they're introducing new products. They say, here's our new product. We've tested it in the lab and developed it there. It's 25% more active. And here's some pilot plant data backing that up. Now, the question is, how good is that pilot plant data? And how much of it do you know about? In this particular case, ART provides a lot of information on their testing of 420DX on different feeds over a range of pressures and if you look at it and study it it makes a convincing case for 420DX. The thing is though you're not necessarily so interested in how 420DX compares to CDXI that's important to you but what you'd really like to see is how does 420DX compare to your current catalyst or to brands or catalysts offered by other suppliers that you're thinking about using. In other words, really what you would like to see is some cross-vendor testing. Now here's an example of cross-vendor testing. This was done by a refiner. It's pilot plant data and it was published by ART. And we have two curves. It's reactor temperature versus sulfur content. And the red data is for an ART catalyst that's a stacked bed of ART catalyst. And the blue data is for a competitive reference catalyst. And you see here a very clear separation showing much better performance for the ART catalyst. This is really more like the type of data you'd like to see where you're showing a new catalyst compared to one that you know and are familiar with, a reference from a competitor. But if you look a little closer you see there's a few problems here. One is the uh, the scale has been stripped off the axis which that doesn't help a lot you have really a test of flavors where you have a stacked bed versus a single catalyst. You don't know what that single reference catalyst is and you don't know who refiner A is. You don't know who did the test and even if you did know refiner A he probably wouldn't be interested in giving you his these details because this is a proprietary study of his own for his own use. Now this type of study though is very much like the study that we do except we have the scales on the axes, we name all the names of all the catalysts and we test a lot of different catalysts from different suppliers on the same test track. Now in the next segment we're going to talk a little bit more about this kind of pilot plant testing 
and what you can and cannot get from it.